I got an email from somebody the other day that said, hey, you're always talking about visualizing things on the neck, like visualizing chords and triads and shapes and patterns and stuff. Uh, can you give an example of what you're talking about? And when I read that, I thought, well, that I'm always giving an example. That's what the lesson is. But then I realized maybe they're not, you know, maybe, maybe that's a good point. You know, maybe when I say visualize, I just think that that's, that's obvious that I'm superimposing visually, you know, a chord, and then I'm able to see those notes in the chord. But I thought it might be really good to do a little lesson like this where I superimpose digitally so you can see what I'm talking about. So that's what we're going to do in this lesson. I'm going to go through a very simple blues where we play the chord changes. It's got kind of a BB King, a little more jazzy vibe. Uh, but I wanted to put the chords up visually so that you can see what I'm saying. Well, so we'll switch the angle here and then you'll see what I'm talking about. I've switched the vantage points and now you're seeing my angle. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and play through a simple little blues where I'm playing through the chord changes. And then I'm going to show you how to play it note for note. And I'll put these visuals up on the screen so you can see how I'm visualizing uh, some of these chord shapes. All right, here's what we're going to learn. <laughs> So that's what we're going to learn, a blues in the key of A. Uh, obviously, you can do this in any key, but we're going to be learning it in A. So the first thing I want to talk through are the chords that are use I'm using. And it's actually pulled out of two shapes. So the first is an A6, classic BB King style chord arrangement. Um, <clears throat> and so the way that I picture this chord is I, I see these three fingers making the D7 shape. So if you think of the D7 down in first position, that little triangle shape, if I were to make that chord shape here where I've got my ring finger on the 7th fret 4th string and then I put my index finger down on the 5th fret 1st string and then I've got that D or I've got that A6 chord with a little D7 shape in the middle. That's how I think of it. It makes it easier to play. The other thing I want you to think about is connect it back to your A bar chord. That's your A major bar chord where you're barring on the fifth fret. That fifth fret is where your index finger goes for this chord. So that way you can make this chord in, you know, in any key if you know how to make your major bar chord. Okay, so there's that. And then we're gonna go to the four chord, which is a D9. And I'm using that same little D7 shape, that little triangle shape, but I'm playing it here now. I've got my middle finger on the 5th fret, 5th string. And then I go ahead and bar with my pinky strings 1 and 2 on the 5th fret. That's the D9 chord. Uh, so that's what we play for the 4 chord. And then the 5 chord is that same chord, but you just slide it up 2 frets. So if you learn nothing else, you've already got a really cool little blues chord arrangement. You can slide in to those chords. So anyway, that's what we're going to be playing over. The 145 blues played off of the A6 and then the D9 and E9 shape. All right, so now that we've talked through those chords, let me go ahead and put a visual up on the screen so you can see that A6 chord shape. Now that's what I'm picturing. Now I'm not going to necessarily play the chord right off the bat, but I'm picturing that chord. And I'm also picturing the fifth fret. That's important. That's kind of that root fret that we I mentioned. And also if I'm playing the minor pentatonic scale, you can see that my index finger goes down on every string on that fifth fret. So it's an important fret. So that means any of these notes are going to work when I'm playing lead. So that makes that easy. I can, I can go to any of those and know that they're in the minor pentatonic scale anyway. But when I superimpose the A6 chord on top of that, then I've got uh, uh, the ability to bounce back and forth between that root fret and the notes of the chord. So what I'm talking about looks like this. <laughs> So all the notes that I was playing, except for my index finger, then my index finger was hitting those fifth fret notes, but the other notes were the notes from that A6 chord shape. So when I started this, that's where that came from. It was just walking right up that chord shape using this root fret to bounce off of. Now that's one way to think about playing a lead is to integrate those chord tones. It allows you to play the changes and sound a little more sophisticated, a little jazzier. You don't have to do that, however. You could just play the minor pentatonic scale, which is what a lot of people do. So I could have just I could have still played the A6 chord. 
And then the D9 chord. You know, and just stayed in the minor pentatonic scale going back and forth. And that works too. It just doesn't sound as sophisticated. Or, or is purposeful, maybe that's a better word for it. Um, okay, so that's the first thing we did. Then I did a quick change to the D9. When, you, when I say quick change, some blues you hang out on the one chord until it's time for the four chord, but in some blues you play the one chord, you do a quick change to the four, then back to the one, and then the four. So there's just two different formulas for it. So in this one we're doing a quick change. So there's the quick change into the D9, and then I played. Now what this is, is playing D Mixolydian scale. And I talked about this Mixolydian scale as a breakthrough in last week's lesson, but let's go back over it as a quick refresher. If we're thinking about the A chord shape, now I'm playing obviously the D chord here, but I'm using that A shape. When I'm picturing that chord shape, and there it is on the screen, so you can see what, you know, what it looks like visually, on top of that, you can see I'm superimposing the Mixolydian scale. And it's very symmetrical, which makes it very easy to play. So you've got 8, 7, 5, 8, 7, 5 on the first two strings. Then you have 7, 5, 4, 7, 5, 4 on strings 3 and 4. And so what I mean by that is when I'm playing this chord shape, any of those notes that I just showed you are going to be Mixolydian scale. Now the next question some of you are going to ask is, how do you know when to use Mixolydian scale? Why would you use that? Well, when you're playing a blues and you get to the 4 chord and the 5 chord, it sounds pretty good when you're playing the chord changes, meaning changing scale to match the chord, uh, to play Mixolydian. Uh, because you've got the flatted 7 in there, which gives it that extra little bluesy sound. If I play the D major scale, it's just going to sound... You know, it just... That over the D9, with that major 7 in there, just doesn't work. you got to flat the 7. See how much better of a fit that is? So you just remember that as a general rule of thumb. You can do what you want for the 1 chord, but when you get to the 4 chord and the 5 chord, one way to approach that when you're playing the changes is to just play the, the Mixolydian scale for the 4 chord and then the Mixolydian scale for the 5 chord. The Mixolydian scale of that 4 chord. So D Mixolydian, E Mixolydian in this case. All right. There's the first thing. And then we, we go to that D Mixolydian. So I'm going to go 4th fret to the 7th fret on the 4th string. And then this little hammer-on pull-off between the 4th fret and the 5th fret on the 3rd string. But you can see where that's coming from now, hopefully. You can see that it's coming from that D Mixolydian. The other thing I just want to superimpose on the screen would be you've got your D7 shape there, which is in that D9 chord. And then you've got another one up here. So look at it this way. Here's, here's how I think of it. D7. I've got my D chord using the A shape, and then I've got my D7 chord up here. So those are your three little visuals that you can use as anchors. Any of those notes are going to sound really good as target notes or chord tones. So you've got this, this little triad, and then this triad, really three triads. Two sevens triads and then the D, you know, major triad. So I'm just pointing that out to let you know that those exist along with that Mixolydian scale. And with all that, you have a ton of options for what you can play. Came back to the seventh fret, fourth string with my pinky. And then I go four, five on the third string. And then watch this. Now you can hear, your ear will tell you what just happened there. As soon as I go into that uh, sixth fret, third string, that's where the song switches back to the one chord because that three is it's the three of the the one chord of the A. So you can hear it. So and that's what I did. I slid right back into A. Right? There would be the third of the A, of the chord, and then there would be the fifth of the chord, fifth fret, second string, and that's just the A triad. That's what I was picturing. Okay, so from the beginning, we go back to the A6 again, and then I, I played a minor pentatonic scale pattern one lick, just to throw that in so you can see that that works too. 
That's the lick. And then I went to walk down to the four chord. But let's look at that pentatonic scale lick. It, it's happening between the fifth fret and the seventh fret on the fourth string. I do a slide up to that seventh fret. And then we're gonna play fifth fret to seventh fret on the third string. So you, little box there. And then a bend. Release. Back to the fifth fret third string. Back to the seventh fret fourth string. So all together. And then I'll go. So that's fifth fret, seventh fret again on the fourth string. And then to walk down to the four chord, I'm gonna play fourth fret, fourth string, uh, fifth fret, fifth string. And those two notes, if you can see, I'm superimposing that D7 shape or the D9. That's the D7 is within the D9, but that little triad there that you can see where those two notes are coming from. So hopefully that makes it easier to see that when you're playing the minor pentatonic scale here, then to go to the four chord, you can picture it there and I know where to play. I could have played this note too, obviously, but that just seemed to work with the little lead part that I did. And then hit the D9 chord twice. And then to wrap up that D part, I went. And so what I'm playing there is I came back up. Remember I was talking about that D7 triad up here? I came up into that. So you can picture, there's two things I'm picturing when I'm playing this. I'm picturing the top part of the A shape right there. And I'm picturing that little D7 triad, which lives off of that A shape. Hopefully that's given you another idea right there. So you've got the D, the D7, right? And the timing for that goes. And then I go back to that fifth fret first string, which is your A note. And that's where we're back to the one chord. You hit that twice, right? So you can, hopefully you can see your D shape there, your D7 shape there. And on top of that, you've also got that D mixolydian thing. And you can see now how D mixolydian runs right through that. So hopefully that's tying some of these things together for you visually. Now, uh, now is where the song goes. After we hit the, the one chord twice, the song goes to the five chord. And that's what I played. To do that, we're starting on the fifth fret second string. And then we're sliding up into posi this position. And hopefully this is gonna make sense. There's the top part of your E chord. Uh, using the A shape, and then right here you have the E7 triad. So it's the, almost exactly the same thing we did for the D, but we're just sliding it up two frets. And then we landed on that ninth fret third string, and that's the whole E lick, and you can see where it's coming from. The E mixolydian scale, by the way. Hopefully that makes sense, and you can you can connect that. So that's the E9, and the final lick goes like this. Now this lick, now we're playing over the A again. Now here's another rule of thumb when you're playing a blues or any kind of one, four, five thing, and you're playing the chord changes. Go ahead and get back to the one chord before the one chord happens, and that's what we're doing here. We're getting there before we're, it's time to play the one chord. So the rhythm section isn't there yet, but you go ahead and play the, a lick out of A, uh, even though we're not technically there yet. You, you could hang out on the E a little longer, but it gets awkward. It's just better, it sounds better to go ahead and play anything out of A. So what I'm picturing here is I'm picturing my A triad right here. And then I'm also picturing my A triad up here using the D shape. And so, when I played that, I'm sliding from this A note, I'm sliding with my pinky up to the ninth fret first string, but you can see why now, because it's a note in the chord. And then I'm gonna walk back down. There's the note from, from your sixth chord, right? So that would be seventh fret, second string, fifth fret, second string. And then we're gonna walk from the, or, or then I'm gonna play uh, fifth fret, sixth fret on the third string. So, 
And then uh, fifth fret, second string. Last note is your A note, which is on the seventh fret, fourth string. And all of these notes, you can play off of that A6 chord shape. You can visualize that chord shape again, and you can see why those notes are working. I'm touching on those notes that are in that chord. So if I were to back up and play through the whole thing one more time. Minor pentatonic. Here's the five chord. Back to the one chord. All right, so hopefully that's been helpful and giving you some ideas for how you might think about visualizing some of these chord shapes when you're playing your, your leads. It just makes it a lot easier because then you know where to go. All right, I'll see you in the next video.